Dot 3 brake fluid was one of my favorite test tube torture tests that we did four years ago. Can you believe it's been that long? I decided to give this another try because it was such an energetic and unexpected test when we did it the first time. This is because brake fluid doesn't have a reputation of being flammable or unstable and it is designed to handle heat very well and not boil in your brake system. Now there's a pretty good chance you didn't see it the first time. The video only has about 60,000 views after four years. In this test it took about four minutes from the time we started heating it up until it reached the point where it could no longer contain the pressure. It was as loud as an M80. We had fire, we had smoke. It was just utter chaos. In these early tests, we used a high temperature silicone to seal the top of the test tube. The silicone was strong enough to withstand hundreds of PSI and the very high temperatures, but it was also designed to give out before the glass vial burst. The brake fluid reached such a high temperature that when the vapor cloud reached the right air fuel ratio, the right mixture, it auto ignited and burst into flames. Now this was filmed at only 300 frames a second. In our new test we're going to be using the Kronos high speed camera and record this at 2500 frames a second. Since the first test was so loud we decided to do this one in a remote location so we wouldn't cause any panic and scare the neighbors. Now in the WD-40 test, a lot of people were asking why I put a balloon behind the test tube. Well, the cameras were having a lot of trouble staying focused on the test tube because of the heat waves. They, they just wanted to focus on the trees in the background. So adding the balloon really helped that. Now the brake fluid is absorbing the heat very, very well. It almost immediately started forming bubbles and boiling. If the material cannot carry away the heat fast enough, we end up getting a hot spot on the glass and it'll actually form a blister and blow out right at that point prematurely. Now we can also see that the brake fluid never breaks down, never decomposes, never changes colors or darkens. Now on a side note, some automotive companies recommend changing brake fluid in your car every 20 or 30,000 miles or every five years. And other sites I looked at said change it when it has a burnt odor or it's no longer clear looking. But after doing these tests on brake fluid, I've got to question that because this fluid is extremely durable under very high temperature conditions. So what it tells me is brake fluid is one of the fluids in your vehicle that you can kind of get away with out changing very often. Uh, the fluid in my truck is 14 years old, it's the original brake fluid and all I've ever done was just make sure that it was at the proper level in the reservoir. But, <laughs> but don't let my bad habits and poor maintenance on my truck uh, affect how you maintain your automobile. So far all we've seen in this test is the liquid level rise, the fluid is expanding. It's probably around 1500 degrees Fahrenheit and as we continue to watch the liquid level rises even more and completely fills the vial. And just like a glass thermometer heated up too much, the fluid has to go somewhere. Now in our first test we used the silicone plug which blew out, but in this test we're using an epoxy putty which is stronger than the glass itself. Now if you remember the first test took 4 minutes, this test only took 2 minutes. The brake fluid wasn't as hot in this test and we never reached that flash point, it never auto ignited. Now the high speed footage shows that our epoxy plug held up very well and it was the glass vial that actually burst and it burst very quickly. So in this test it didn't burst because of vapor pressure but because of hydrostatic pressure. The liquid expanded so much it had nowhere else to go so the vial eventually blew out. It's similar to if you took a hydraulic pump, stuck it to the top of the test tube and applied a couple thousand PSI to it. We didn't have any fire and the sound itself was considerably different. We had a much duller, deeper thud. We used the same brake fluid from the same container 
but got different results. With test tube torture tests, we never know what is going to happen. Did you know you could support YouTube channels financially by clicking on the join button and becoming a member? This will cost you a minimum of $5 a month. And it, it sounds like a great idea for YouTube creators, but YouTube takes 30% of that. So the creator only gets $3.50 before taxes. If a lender was charging you 30% interest on a loan, that is called usury and it's illegal. And in my opinion, if YouTube only took 5%, that's more than they deserve. Now in my humble opinion, I believe that Patreon is a good effective way to support a YouTube channel. And you can do this for just a buck a month. I'd rather have five people support me on Patreon with just a dollar a month than one person on YouTube becoming a member for $5 a month. And on Patreon you can automatically pay a dollar a month using PayPal and it's, it's painless. And we really do appreciate your support. Thank you very much.